today's all about listening to local industry, to local leaders from the Bendigo community, including those from the council, about jobs, about investment, about doing what we can do as an alternative government to, uh, to properly promote jobs growth. What we've seen over the last two years is something like 34,000 regional Victorians join the unemployment queues. That's 34,000 full-time jobs that have been lost right across regional and rural Victoria. What I know, and what I think country communities know, is the government can't fix everything, but they can certainly have a go. They can certainly work hard to keep Victorians in work. We just haven't seen that from Ted Bayou over the last two years. So right throughout 2012, Tim Holding and other members of my team have been touring right across Victoria, but obviously getting to all corners of the state. And today's an opportunity for leaders in the Bendigo community to share with us their thoughts and ideas on how we can create uh, important jobs in this local community right across country Victoria uh, and indeed right across our uh, different different industry sectors indeed right across uh, the whole of our uh, state. So what are some specific focuses for the plan? Well obviously governments can't do everything, they can't fix everything but there are things that can be done. For instance uh, building major infrastructure, uh, important major infrastructure projects, uh, being careful, being considered about the way in which governments spend Victorian taxpayers' money. So making sure that you buy local, that you support local industry as much as you possibly can. There are many different practical things, many of which don't cost enormous amounts of money that can make a profound difference. Uh, I'll give you a, a, what is a classic and in some respects ironic, um, a, a, an ironic example today. Uh, Kim Wells, the treasurer, is here to open the state trustee's office uh, I made the point yesterday in a speech to the Melbourne Press Club that soon Mr Bowyer and his ministers will run out of Labor ribbons to cut. Well, there's a great example today. A L Labor's vision to decentralise government, to take public sector jobs from the centre of Melbourne out into our regional centres, Bendigo, Ballarat, Geelong and other parts of the state. Mr Wells is here today to make that opening, to open that. Now he's going to cut that ribbon, a Labor Party ribbon. At the same time, this government's taking a hundred pu public sector jobs out of the Department of Education right here. Uh, this just makes no sense. Th that's a great example of the approach of this government taking away uh, and the approach of the previous government, which was all about investing and making sure that every part of the state shared in the prosperity shared in the energy and the effort of the Victorian government. You've got to govern for everybody, and that includes uh, large regional centres like Bendigo, but also smaller regional uh, centres of history. Everybody remembers the cutbacks and the neglect of the Kennett government. But make no mistake, this government is no better. It took Jeff Kennett seven years to add 10,000 people to the elective surgery waiting list. It went from about 30,000 to about 40,000. Mr Bowyer has added nearly 8,000 people to the elective surgery waiting list in 18 months. This is astronomical. It is fixing nothing. And remember his promise. Ted Bowyer and David Davis need to take responsibility for the fact that under their government, the waiting list is at 46,000 people. When they came to office, it was at 38,000 people. These are not numbers. These are real people in real pain. And they will continue to wait longer and longer until this government works out that cutting $616 million out of hospitals is not good for patients. I know that. I think every Victorian with any common sense knows that, except, of course, the Premier and his, I've got to say it, excuse for a health minister.